already going quick. 2020, I said 2023, 2024. February 1st, 2024. I just, I can't believe how quick it's going. I am so thankful that the Lord has allowed us to do these morning devotions together. I pray that it is a blessing to you, um, as it is to Matthew and I, to know that God is allowing us to do this, to bless our brothers and sisters in Christ, and to bless those that maybe are hungry after God and just really don't know that this would be that bread of life, that drink of living water that causes them, causes you to hunger and thirst after righteousness, to hunger and thirst after God, who so dearly loves you, who so dearly wants to spend that time of fellowship with you. It's not a natural thing. It's a thing that happens that can only be guided by the Spirit of Almighty God drawing you to Him. That revelation that God loves you, that comes from the Spirit of God drawing us to Jesus, drawing us to God Almighty, that we would have an understanding of the love that God has for us. This week we have been talking a lot about repentance. Um, I have some more scriptures talking about repentance. If you repent, then you become born again. Um, and let's open up this way and with a word of prayer. You have tuned in to Matt and Randy in the morning. We are here to encourage you in the word so that you can be strong in the faith and live victoriously in Christ. Because that is where true victory is found. That is where true peace is found. That is where true joy is found. Because it is not dependent on anything happening around you. It is totally dependent on who God is. His promises that never fail. What God says is it. He's the final word. Ah. Oh. What a precious thing to know how much God loves us. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, as we get into your word, may your word, Father, bring comfort and strength, encouragement. Lord, may it bring conviction where conviction is needed. That sorrow that brings to repentance, that sorrow that brings salvation. Not a worldly sorrow, Lord, but a godly sorrow that brings us to you that we may be embraced by you as a prodigal son came running to his father and his father was there waiting with an embrace, called to have a feast. Lord, that is what you do for those children of yours that have gone astray, but come back to you. And I thank you for that. Oh, I thank you so much for your mercy, your love, and your grace. In Jesus' name. Anoint your word. May I speak it the way you want me to, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. 2 Corinthians 7, 10 says this. Actually, I'm going to start in verse 9. It says, Now I rejoice not that you were made sorry, but that your sorrow led to repentance. For godly sorrow produces repentance, leading to salvation. Not to be regretted. You know, when you feel sorrowful and broken because you realize you sinned against God, and that brings you to repentance, that repentance will bring salvation. But, okay, but it says the sorrow of the world produces death. The sorrow of the world will make somebody drink. I know, that's why I thought something was wrong. <laughs> But, so, love this, <laughs> love you too, that's Matthew speaking to me through whatever you call love those you. cameras. <laughs> but, the sorrow of the world is a sorrow that causes people to commit suicide. People that seem like they have everything, but yet they have regrets. You see, 
But the sorrow that God brings is a sorrow that brings you to the place where you repent for the things that you know you've done that were mispleasing to God, not pleasing to Him. And you fall in His arms and allow his love, his mercy, and his grace to come upon you. You accept that sacrifice that Jesus Christ did on Calvary for the forgiveness of your sins. That's godly sorrow. That's what it produces. And that brings salvation. In Joel 2, 12 through 13, it says, Now therefore says the Lord, Turn to me with all your heart. And the children of Israel, we used to fasting and praying and stuff. And he says, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning. So rend your heart and not your garment. Don't do things out of the ways of the world. You know, the world, when you say sorry, expects you to do certain things. You know, from the outside, you may look like you've repented. You know, they used to put sackcloth on and oh, and weep. But God is saying, rend your heart. Be sorry from your heart. Really mean it. Not just because you got caught doing something wrong. But because you truly are sorrowful. That you would hurt the God Almighty that loves you so much. You know, and that sorrow that brings you running to Him. If it's a sorrow that makes you run away from God, that's not a godly sorrow. Because a godly sorrow will make you run to the God that loves you. It says, Return to the Lord your God, for He is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and great in kindness, and He relents from doing harm. John 1, 6-13 says, oh, Wow, I'm running out of time real quick. It says, there was a man sent from God whose name was John. This man came for a witness, to bear witness of the light, that all through him might believe, and that light is spelled with capital L. He was not that, capital L again, light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. In other words, John the Baptist was not the light. He was not the Savior. He came to give witness of that light. So that was the true light, again, capital L which gives light, little l, to every man coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, and the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own did not receive him. But, again, that three little letter word that I love so much, but as many as received him, to them, he gave the right to become children of God to those who believe in his name, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. Get that? It is the will of God that you be born again. Ah, oh, hallelujah. Goes on in John three fourteen through 20. And it says this. Let me start in verse 14 over here. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him should not perish. That serpent that it's speaking about in the time of Moses, there was a time when Israel had sinned, and sickness was coming upon them, and God had Moses uh, make a post with a serpent on it. And those who would look on it would be healed. Well, Jesus was lifted up. And Jesus brings healing to those who look upon him. He says, but whoever believes in him. And you know, when they looked at that, they had, they had to believe that, that, that what God said was going to happen. It says, and Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so... Must the Son of Man be lifted up, that who be whoever believes in Him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever believes in Him 
should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He who believes in him is not condemned, but he who does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation, that the light has come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For everyone practicing evil hates the light, and does not come to the light, lest his deeds should be exposed. But he who does the truth comes to the light, that his deeds may clearly be seen, that they have been done in God. Oh, the love that God has for us. I'm going to go real quick to 1 Peter. Let's see here. I have it marked. 1 Peter 1, 23-25 says this. Uh, let me find my spot here. Having been born again, and this again is the person who has repented, the person who has said, Lord, I want you to be Lord of my life, and have asked for forgiveness of their sins, and turns from evil to the light. It says, since you have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the Spirit, I love that, it's through the Spirit, in our own strength, we can't do this. It's because of the Spirit of God inside of us that we can resist the devil and flee from evil. It is because of the Spirit of God that we can understand how much God loves us. It is through the Spirit. It's not our own smartiness. It's not our own strength. It's not because of the things that we do. It is the gift of God. It's what salvation is through Jesus Christ. It goes on and says, Bringing the truth in sincere love of the brethren, love one another fervently with a pure heart. Having been born again, and I listen to this, not of corruptible seed, but incorruptible, through the word of God, which lives and abides forever. All flesh is as grass, and all the glory of man as a flower of the grass. The grass withers and its flower falls away. But the word of the Lord endures forever. The word of the Lord endures forever. I'm trying to think whether I want to go on ahead. and I'm going to go on ahead. Now we're going to go to Romans 5, 6, 3, 11. It says this, For when we were still without strength in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet perhaps for a good man someone would even dare to die. But God, there's that but, B-U-T, again, three little letters. But God demonstrates his own love toward us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Much more then, having now been justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. For if then, excuse me, for if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his son, much more having been reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. And not only that, but we also, and I love this, rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received the reconciliation. Reconciled to God Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. The one who says, I have adopted you as my child. When you accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, oh, you step into an inheritance that's so far beyond anything you can imagine. But the greatest part of it is that you have the love of God, the peace of God, the joy of God that can't be shaken, can't be taken away. Sorrow may come for a moment, oh, but joy comes back. So because of that, 
you can keep a praise song in your heart. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. We are not victims. You are not a victim. You are victorious in Christ Jesus. And if you have not accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, don't wait till tomorrow. Don't wait till later. When this is done, call out to God. Tell him, if you don't understand this thing about Jesus, say, Lord, I don't understand this, but I do believe that Jesus came and died for my sins and rose again three days later that I may know that I might have life and have more abundant life, that one day you will call me home and I will rejoice forever. I will have that peace that passes all understanding. Lord, help me to know you better. In Jesus' name, amen. God answers those types of prayers. So we'll see you tomorrow. Have a very blessed day. Keep a praise on your heart. Rejoice in the Lord knowing he so dearly loves you.